Hi students, welcome to the Chem 300 series and the uh, Year 11 Chemistry and Property and Structures of Matter topic. Uh, this is video number 11 on flame testing. As we have our little wander around the structure of the atom, there's a few different things that we need to take into account. We've looked at the atomic number and atomic mass, the fact that that mass can change and sometimes that affects the stability of the nucleus and also the fact that electron configuration um, is basically identified by um, where electrons are in the shells. Now one of the important tests that you're going to be carrying out in the classroom are flame tests and these are things that you might have already done before and I know that um, if you're a regular attender at New Year's Eve festivals and other such uh, events, you'll be very familiar with that whole idea of emission spectra. Emission spectra just means emit, so giving out, and this relates to the electromagnetic spectra, so specifically um, the bits that we can see, the light part of the um, electromagnetic spectrum. What we do know is that electrons occupy, so if this is the nucleus here, then there are a number of different energy levels. These are the Bohr energy levels that we've talked about before. So we can talk about uh, shell one, two, three, and four. And electrons occupy particular regions of space around the nucleus. And again, this is a little oversimplified, but for our purposes, this will work. So if an electron is occupying a particular region, what can happen to it is that it can take in energy and move to a higher state. Now, this can be in the form of all sorts of different things. Um, one of the simple ways to do it is just to heat it up. If there's sufficient energy, the um, corresponds to the amount of energy required for it to move from level two to level four, then it will move from what we call a ground state, which is where it is, up to its excited state. Now, because it's in an excited state, it's um, got too much energy. It's unstable. So it will return to its ground state. So when this electron returns to its ground state, what it does is releases that um, particle or uh, photon, that little quanta of energy, um, back out, which is equivalent to the difference in energy between level two and level four, in this case, from where it's moved. When it does that, that particular photon, that amount of energy that comes out has a specific wavelength. And that wavelength can, uh, well, it will occupy a component of the electromagnetic spectrum. It can occupy a component of the visible component of that spectrum. And then we would see it as a band of light. If a whole number of electrons are doing this at the same time, then you can have a number of different colors um, or bands of light that are all being given out at about the same time. And of course, um, this can uh, change the nature of the color of what we see when this particular test is carried out. The most common application of this is fireworks, and this was a nice example of the 2018 fireworks that happened uh, over Pittwater out of Bayview. We saw some very nice fireworks out there, um, some lots of nice patterns. But one of the interesting things about fireworks is that the next time you're watching them, have a look at the range of colours that you see, because there isn't actually a very big range. It looks like there is, there's lots of different patterns, there's lots of different things that are happening, but there's only a limited number of colours available. And that's because the, the fireworks are coming from the emission spectra of different metallic elements that are part of the firework. So obviously when they're uh, uh, lit, they get a lot of energy that excites the electrons. And then as the electrons fall back into their ground state again, they release that energy. And that's the beautiful colours that we see. But there are only a certain number of these um, that produce colours in the visible spectrum that we can see. So strontium is a really nice one that's often um, chosen because strontium has a really nice rich red colour, very similar to what we see in our firework. But this is not the only one. There are a number of different uh, flame tests that we can carry out for different types of ions, copper, barium, calcium, sodium, potassium. 
If you were to carry out a series of flame tests, would you be able to identify the particular metal iron involved? Let's see if you can in the classroom. Thanks for watching.